Well, I jumped right to slide 15 just to say that we actually show that we actually do talk to each other every now and then. <laughs> I'm surprised that uh, Naomi still gives me a uh, a microphone after uh, she used my voice for the, uh, the break. Uh, it's kind of fun. I'm glad to be here, but I've been traveling like crazy, and uh, I was looking at uh, the program, and I noticed that uh, uh, if I feel like I'm in church today because uh, I never gave uh, Naomi a title, so it feels like I got a speaking assignment, and this is what I'm going to talk about. Anyhow, um, I really wanted what I had to talk about, but then I looked at the program, and I don't have to talk about all the reasons why we're doing coupling. I can really focus on... Um, on uh, what we can do in operations, and particularly why we are working with HICOM, why we're working with WaveWatch, and how we're getting forward. So my first slide is, so yeah, just look at all the other presentations to help you awake. I don't have to tell much about that. The only thing I want you to remember is that most of you guys are weather weenies. Some of us have a lot more things to do in life, uh, and there are an enormous amount of things uh, that are outside of the weather side that are still very important for NOAA where coupling comes in uh, big time. Uh, the weather ocean coupling, of course, uh, particularly in the operational sense of modeling, uh, the, starting with the Palm GFDL model, uh, it's pretty clear that we need that. But another place where coupling has been used often is in seasonal uh, modeling. And you can go to a lot, many other models too. Uh, for ocean circulation, there's a reason for coupling, for waves, for inundation, either salt or fresh water, and these two have to be combined too. If you're in a hurricane flood zone, you really don't care the salinity of the water. You care whether it's in your house or not. And one thing that really comes up these days is ecosystems. Uh, ecosystems is a big driver for funding in NOAA and actually helps me to have uh, the resources to uh, do ocean modeling. And it's not just uh, hurricane groups. If, you, if I look at it uh, in all the coupled modeling, uh, any, lots of big parts of NOAA are involved in that. All the different uh, uh, other uh, government agencies that do something in modeling are involved with this. So it's, it's a big deal. It's not just hurricanes. Hurricanes helps putting it on the foreground, but it's a big deal in general. Uh, for wind waves, it's a little bit uh, less. Uh, it's... Uh, less well developed, I would say, in this environment. But we've already gone through a whole bunch of reasons why we do need to do coupling. What we sort of forget in this group is that coupling with waves is really not something that is that new. Uh, for the last 15 years, the European Center has been running a coupled weather wave model because they believe they have better surface fluxes that way. There are, in civil engineering literature, at least three decades of papers on how storm surge is for a big part driven by waves and not by wind. And the same thing um, uh, is true uh, with uh, uh, wave current interactions. Uh, when I uh, did my PhD in the 80s, I built up on about 30 years of experience with wave current interactions for doing my PhD. So it's not as new as some people might think. So why would we, if we go coupling, why do we use HICOM? Uh, it's a very legitimate question. Uh, you have a uh, established GFDL POM and an established HWARF POM approach in operation. So uh, why break uh, what's not broken? But we have good reasons for looking at HICOM. First of all, uh, we are using HICOM for other reasons, for full ocean modeling. And by using uh, HICOM for uh, coupled hurricane modeling, we do basically the same thing that the Navy is doing uh, up to a, at least a halfway up there, what Isaac just showed. Uh, they use ENCODA for that established, everyday running ocean assimilation system to at least be part of the hurricane system. We decided to go one step further. We have Art of the Atlantic running, so we have a full 3D HICOM model running for the Atlantic. Uh, that means that if we do a good job of setting up that system, we should have a really good estimate of what the ocean state is at any time, any day, and why not use that instead of having a system that you have to separately initialize. Also, uh, the fact that we're talking about a full ocean model, a full 3D ocean model, means that there are a lot of other people interested in the model. That means that you almost for free if you know how to communicate, get an enormous amount of feedback from another community that is not necessarily just hurricane related. So it makes sense to leverage research that way. Also, 
by going through a full model, you may make life a little bit more complicated because it's more expensive. But you do have a, the, the most solid background on a physical basis to make on physical basis progress in uh, the work you're doing. And there's a very practical side for that. Uh, we are living in a part of the government that is not as rich as everybody else is, right? We have a whole bunch of jobs to do. We have to do them every day. And we need to make sure that we simplify our life. Uh, within NSAP, we have nobody who supports the POM system. That does not mean that it's not supported, but there is not a phone number that central operations can call at 3 a.m. Sunday morning to figure out what the beep is going wrong with the operational system. So there is a big issue for us that we either need to have in-house a phone number of somebody that we can go after, or we can replace this by a system that we're already using. So it is, this is not a science, this is not a political issue, this is purely a, a, a practical issue of maintaining a model suite. And the only way we could afford starting maintaining more models if we come to the conclusion that we need these things for multi-model ensembles and get the proper resources for it. So why WaveWatch? A little bit of a different story. Uh, uh, let's go back to the fact uh, that uh, this is an ocean wave model. It's an in-house NSAP wave model, but in the meantime, it is the de facto community model, or a de facto community model. Uh, traditionally, we started in a deep ocean, but we can go all the way up to the surf zone now. And uh, we can get close to resolutions of single waves, so we can, in principle, run this model at 100 meter resolution or thereabouts. Uh, traditionally, this has been run within NSEP as a traditional guidance model. So we run a deep ocean, we run it on a fixed schedule. But this is a little bit different. We are actually supporting the weather service for capabilities of running in, their own, in the forecast offices their own models offline whenever they want it. And this is actually becoming, this is something that I've been helping the, work, the weather service to get going. But all of NOAA has signed off on the idea that this is a good idea. And they have signed off on the idea that I should support it. So thanks to the fact that HFIP sends money to NOS, NOS sends money to me to build this system. So don't tell us that we don't talk to each other and don't work together. So where are we with the progress? Well, we've been working on HICOM H4 for quite a while. Basically, we had to bring in a new model uh, because we were working on HICOM, but we were still working basically on the development of the, of the standalone basin scale model too. Uh, that needed to get some maturity. And then if you start, modeling two model, start coupling two models to each other, you run into all kinds of technical crap, and especially if you want to do that uh, in a guaranteed, always on-time method. So, so it, it, it's a learning curve, and it took a while. But by the end of 2008, we had a system that we were relatively uh, satisfied with. With one big caveat, we really needed some things in HWARF in order to make the coupling work decently well that really didn't become available in the operational side until the new baseline that we had this year. So this means that we, we, we deliberately chose to diverge a little bit from the operational HWARF with the idea to come back as soon as it could. And the other issue was that we started up this group well, you can't go to Kmart and buy a group to support a model. You have to do that slowly and surely, too. So for a while, we've had one person working on that, and we're now growing. And this group is now big enough that we can basically keep up with uh, the other part of the HWARF group, which is VJ's group. So what did we do? We had this system that was uh, relatively mature. And we decided to, uh, to do the thing that you really need to do in operations, make sure that you can really run this really independently, not tinkering with it, and just see what comes out of it. Again, we know that we're not exactly the h baseline, so the goal was just to see if we can do this, if this has potential. And by the way, of course, we're going to compare it to the operational because we want to see where we are. But the real uh, proof is uh, in doing pre-op testing this year, where we're completely bringing back the models to the baseline of h -Worf. And the goal is a little bit different. We've had plenty of time to set up this system so this system better work better than the POM one. This one will be basically at the last moment of the operational testing, throwing things over the wall. I'm more than satisfied if this system just works as well as POM. I'm, I'm not surprised if this system, would, uh, or this system would outperform that system a little bit. So very quickly, uh, how does the system work? Upper half of the slide, out of Atlantic, 
which is a HICO model, a little bit confusing, but we uh, run that every day. It's a 12th of a degree rotated grid, so it's actually more like a 25th of a degree resolution on the coast. Uh, it gets all the data that the typical ocean models get. It's forced by the GFS, but on top of that, we do put uh, bogus uh, wind for uh, hurricanes in there to get uh, better hurricane initialization. So this keeps running and running and running. If we need to run an h wharf model, we use the Arctos Atlantic to initialize the ocean. While it's running, it provides boundary conditions. And then we have the coupled system. This is the simple-minded coupled system. Only the SST goes to the atmosphere, and all the fluxes go back to the ocean. Very briefly, the outer domain is the Arctos Atlantic. The three boxes are the three different areas where we uh, can couple with a smaller uh, uh, grid. Uh, Actually, that is a, a sl even a reduced, reduced resolution grid. This is actually more like a real 12th of degree grid that we're running there. And then I won't go into too much details, but this actually does give you a very realistic look of the ocean. Just look at the fact that we have a real Gulf Stream. Look at the fact that uh, this is for Ike. Ike is uh, generating all kinds of local currents. You have the cooling behind it, and you can see the wake beautifully in all kinds of uh, uh, wave patterns. So our testing last year, we looked at basically three different models. Two of them, the black and the red, have an identical version of Hworth, not the operational version, but an identical version. So black versus red means a comparison of uh, how much impact HICOM could have if you replace POM with HICOM. And just for, uh, for general comparison, green is what was the real operational model. So long story short, we have uh, a little bit of uh, improvement in track uh, due to adding HICOM, but it's only marginally better than the operational. But you have a very significant improvement in intensity. Again, look at this the right way. This is not uh, running it exactly against HWAF. This is making sure, sure that we have a capability of doing something. The other thing that we, we personally are very interested in, you can see the bars on here. The HICOM system has a much more narrow range of resolutions it gives, which to me hopefully means as a modeler that uh, I have less of a random error and more of a systematic error. And systematic errors are, as a modeler, easier to track than random errors. So I have good hope for this system to be a positive system for later work. So then uh, we're doing the, the pre-ops testing. These are all the cases we're looking at. And we incrementally keep adding all kinds of things to last year's operational model. We're almost there. The only thing we've not added yet is the resolution increase for the GFS this year. So what you see here in green is the operational model of last year. In red is the uh, new baseline that we had to come to because we had to jump through some hoops here and there. And then purple and orange are test packages either with POM or HICOM that have all the planned upgrades for this year in it, with the exception of the GFS uh, resolution increase. And in this case, you can see orange versus purple. That is what you want to look at. Tracks are virtually identical, slightly better at, uh, at uh, the long forecast hours. And the intensity errors are almost identical. So I don't see a massive improvement here, but I see at least equal uh, behavior. But if you look at the intensity biases, you can actually see that with the HICOM model that uh, works uh, a little better. And considering the fact that we just transplanted this from a different version of the model, I'm very satisfied with uh, seeing this, and I believe that we can uh, uh, see uh, much more improvement in the near future. Three minutes. Yep, got it. HICOM Wave Watch, very simple. You've already seen this. Uh, there's a lot of work being go going on there. And I'm very interested in uh, seeing how it will go in the near future. We are building a uh, workstation WaveWatch 3, which is a collaboration with uh, NOS. Uh, and it is intended now to become a coastal model for waves and surges coupled through AdCirc, uh, which is completely embedded in what we're running in operations. So it's a little bit similar to uh, workstation WARF. And this is HWARP funding that NOS got and that it funneled to us. So again, a little example of how well uh, we um, start working together. We think that test versions will be available uh, somewhere early next year. Uh, it will be a standalone model, but this actually could become sort of a blueprint 
of how to do uh, operational uh, um, uh, hurricane surge forecasting uh, just on selected areas of the coast. The one thing I do want to talk about, there's a lot of misinformation that went around. A lot of people have been telling me that running a real ocean is way too expensive. And I don't believe that, and I think that's a little bit of misunderstanding. This is what the resource assignment is at the moment of the system we're running. H Wharf runs about as much as it used on about 90, 91 CPUs, Highcom on 30, and if you add the wave model on 6. So what the case is, is that Highcom requires a significant amount of resources, but significantly less than H Wharf. But it re requires about 30 times more than the original palm coupling. And some people have said, because it, this means that HICOM is 30 times more ex expensive, you need to choose between ensembles or, way or, or ocean coupling. This shows you that, basically, you need more resources, but not that much more. And if you add the wave model, that's basically noise compared to HICOM. But that's not the whole story. You have to be able to run it in the real time. We have 20 nodes available for the operational age dwarf model. We want to go from four to five, and hopefully adding HICOM. We know that we can run H4 of HICOM. We are confident that we can run it on four nodes. So in the present operational resources, we can run this model uh, within uh, the resources that we have. And I'm sure that if we spend some time with the IBM folks on making sure that uh, this model gets a little bit better optimized, we would actually gain back a lot of resources that we can use for the 2012 uh, implement, uh, 2011 implementation uh, if needed. So resources should not be an issue. It is more expensive, but it is not uh, something that is going to break the bank, and it definitely fits in operations this year. Uh, in the future, very briefly, I won't go uh, in this long, I don't believe that uh, I need a much higher resolution HICOM if I go to higher resolution WARF. So the, the, the relative cost of HICOM is going to go down. And the wave model is going to be set up to scale exactly the same way as WARF, so that shouldn't be an issue either. Risks, I don't see any risks if you add the wave model. It's just like adding another boundary layer package because it's basically not an unstable or not a chaotic model. It's just essentially adding physics. But for HICOM, there are some risks. One of them is that we've had some problems before with Arthos Atlantic. We think we have them all under control pretty well. Uh, we've had some issues with uh, the fact that it is a more complex model. One of the risks has been that we have not that much support for it. That has basically been fixed because we do have several new people that have come on the floor for supporting this model with good experience. And then finally, uh, people have been saying that it's uh, such a much more complex system that may be more prone to failure. Well, we have been running it fine for, with hands-off mode for the whole year. And um, it's been proven also to be pretty robust in uh, parallel testing. Uh, and there are ways of getting around this. If you really af are afraid of this model, you can make fallbacks in the, in the coupler. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm done. Okay. Thank you, Hendrik.